Well, as we wrap up this project, um, this is the hard part uh, because we come to the part where we uh, not only have finished the, uh, the build of the LST, but uh, we've come to the end for uh, our story uh, about Uncle Jake and, and about the LST 348. So just in kind of wrapping up, I thought I would just share a few letters um, with you. In one of the previous videos, I showed some of the postcards that uh, he had sent home to his mother uh, and to uh, the sister that he was closest with. Uh, in fact, his mother was living with this particular sister, his sister, um, while he was away, and she lived with her until... Uh, my great-grandmother passed away. So he was sending these postcards and these letters to them. Um, and uh, one of the postcards I, I think I showed uh, in a previous uh, video was uh, this one. And this one was sent from, uh, this was from Salerno, Italy. Um, and this was dated January or postmarked January the 13th, 1944. Uh, approximately a little over a month before uh, Uncle Jake died. Uh, and he says, Dear Mom, this is one place I'll never forget. Save all these postcards, and I'll tell you a little story about each one when I get home someday. <sighs> he never got the chance to tell those stories. So hopefully this this at least will help tell some of the some of the story. So there was that one. So then on March the 7th, 1944, my great grandmother received this letter uh, from the Navy Department, uh, the Bureau of Naval Personnel. And it says, Dear Mrs. Trees, it is with deep regret this bureau confirms the report that your son, Jake Trees, motor machinist mate, second class, United States Naval Reserve, is missing in action. Detailed information in connection with this disappearance has not been received in this bureau at this time. The Navy Department is aware of your anxiety you are assured that when additional information becomes available, it will be sent to you. Uh, and so this was uh, signed by A.C. Jacobs, the uh, commander of the U.S. Naval Reserve, head of casualties and allotment section. And again, that was uh, March the 7th, 1944. And so um, just a couple of weeks after the ship went down, um, my great grandmother was informed that um, Jake wasn't in, in indeed missing in action. And then a little over a month later, on the 29th of April, 1944, she received another letter. This letter from the uh, senior watch officer, uh, C.B. Evans, lieutenant, uh, junior grade, and the first lieutenant, Dale J. Manchester, lieutenant, junior grade. Dear Mrs. Trees, we know by this time that you have received official word from the Navy Department that Jake is missing in action. We know there is little we can say that will lessen your grief, but we do want you to know that we join you in the splendid pride we have in him for the fine, upstanding man he was and the courageous manner in which he performed his duty. On the early morning of February 20th, our ship suffered two terrific underwater explosions. In our opinion, all the ship's personnel were able to leave the ship. There was a heavy sea, though, and it was about four and a half hours until daylight after the ship was abandoned. Ships stood by near the vicinity of the disaster the remainder of the night and all of the next day, and a very thorough search was made for survivors. We fear that Jake must have lost his life by drowning, although up to this time there is no definite evidence that he is deceased. 
Jake was not only highly respected and loved by his shipmates, but he was well liked by the officers of our ship. His record in the Navy for efficient and courageous performance of duty is very high. We went through several invasions together and his performance at his battle station was excellent, even though often under enemy fire. Please accept our sincere sympathy that we extend to you in these trying hours of grief and doubt. May God comfort you. And then the final letter was received about a year later. March the 10th, 1945. A letter written and signed by the then Secretary of the Navy, James Forrestal. My dear Mrs. Trees, your son Jake Trees, motor machinist mate second class, United States Naval Reserve, has been carried on the official records of the Navy Department in the status of missing in action since 20 February 1944. He was a member of the crew serving on board the USS LST-348 when that vessel, while en route from Nasita, Italy to Anzio, Italy, received two violent underwater explosions and sank. The order to abandon ship was given immediately and those who survived were later rescued by another vessel. Extensive searches were made of the area, but no trace of your son could be found. None of the personnel missing from this action have been reported as prisoners of war. Weather conditions during this time included a calm sea and good visibility. In view of the length of time that has elapsed without any indication that your son survived, I am reluctantly forced to the conclusion that he is deceased. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 5 of Public Law 490, 77th Congress, as amended, the date of death for your son is, for the purposes of termination of pay and allowances, settlement of accounts, and payment of death gratuities, presumed to be 21 February 1945, which is the day following the expiration of 12 months in the missing status. I extend my deepest sympathy to you in your sorrow. It is hoped that you may find comfort in the knowledge that your son gave his life for his country, upholding the highest traditions of the Navy. So, what I want to show next uh, is uh, a couple of the memorials uh, where uh, Uncle Jake uh, is memorialized. Um, and so as we switch to a couple of photos, uh, let, let's take a look at those. This photo shows a memorial wall which is in the Sicily, Rome, American Cemetery and Memorial in Lazio, Italy. And as you can see from the photo, the inscription above the wall reads, Here are recorded the names of Americans who gave their lives in the service of their country and who sleep in unknown graves. And as you can see from this next photo, Uncle Jake's name is about two-thirds of the way down uh, in this particular photo. Jake Trees, motor machinist mate, second class. U.S. Naval Reserve, Texas. And then finally, this last picture shows a headstone uh, that is in the Mount Olive Cemetery in Big Spring, Texas. Uh, this is the cemetery where Uncle Jake's mother, my great-grandmother, is buried, uh, as well as his sister, Madeline Trees, who was uh, the sibling that he was probably closest to uh, and the one who cared for my great-grandmother until she died. And so they are both buried in this cemetery and this headstone lies beside my great-grandmother's headstone. To this day, it's just a headstone. There's an empty grave beneath it. But who knows, maybe someday he'll be able to come home.
Probably one of the best descriptions of what happened to LST-348 was given by uh, Carlo Deste in his book, Fatal Decision, Anzio and the Battle for Rome. He describes it this way, the loss of LST-348 occurred the morning of February 20th, 20th at 0225 hours when a German torpedo suddenly struck the 5,500-ton ship from out of the blackness. Survivors later recalled it was like running into a stone wall at full tilt. The forward half of the ship seemed to disappear, and her skipper gave the saddest of orders to any sailor, abandoned ship. The ship's engineer, a lieutenant junior grade, started below decks to attempt to set up ballast pumps to trim the ship when she encountered or when he encountered Chief Motor Machinist Mate John O'Brien, who insisted that as the older of the two, it was his task to go down. He was not seen again until four hours later, when his stiff and swollen body was recovered by an LCI. Ten minutes after the first attack, the ship was broken in two by a second torpedo. During this time, the crew had sighted a German U-boat off the port side. The LST skipper gave the order to sink the submarine, but just as the deck gun fired, the second torpedo hit the port fuel tank and wiped out the engine room like a welding torch set to tissue paper. LST-348 died, and with her, 24 of her crew. Another 34 were eventually counted in one of the Anzu evacu evacuation hospitals. It was nearly two hours before help came in the form of an LCI, and some died in the water. True to the naval creed, the last to leave the dying ship was her skipper, Lieutenant Junior Grade Stevenson Jennings. Only one lifeboat was left intact, and inside huddled 40 men, many of whom were badly burned. The ship was consumed as flames roared like a forest fire. The diesel oil came down just like rain, rain on fire. Barrels were flying around in the air. Ventilators were blown off. Everything seemed to come apart. Said Skipper Jennings, it was like an oven with turkeys roasting inside. We were the turkeys. You could see the men on fire just standing there, sort of like they were naked and their red bodies aflame with oil fire standing out like torches against the black sky. Charles M. Ward, motor machinist mate third class New York, and one of the quietest men on the ship, rushed up to one of the burning men and started beating out the fire with his bare hands. After getting the fire out on this man, he ran over to a second burning man, now a veritable flaming torch, and threw him overboard. The water extinguished the fire, and the man now lives. LST-348 was a veteran of three invasions, Sicily, Salerno, and now Anzio. During the first 16 days of the battle, the ship had seen only a single day off and had survived between 20 and 25 near misses from German bombs and the heavy guns in the Alban Hills. She had enough shrapnel holes to make her look like a smallpox case. This time, her luck had finally run out. Okay. Well, here we are. She is as finished as we are going to get her. Um, I'm just going to do a quick spin around um, so that you can see uh, some of the, the details. Um, not going to spend a lot of time in this video showing a lot of the details because I know this video is al already running very long with some of the other information that we've included. So we will just do a quick spin around and then I plan on doing a separate video that focuses just on the build itself uh, so that you can see a lot of the other details. But let's, uh, let's give it a spin around so that you can see. Here you can see the uh, Just the, the back end, pull it out just a little bit. Trying to make sure that I stay still in, in the picture here, in the, in the frame. Uh, you can see some of the weathering and some of the damage uh, that we included.
He also included some some damage to the front to the front end the the bulwarks and the the front end of the of the hull there. So I'll pull in now and do do just a quick quick scan down of the of the deck so that you can see some of the detail that we did on the deck. And so there you have it. Uh, as I said, I'll I'll post a maybe a little longer video with some photos uh, and some more some more video uh, just so you can see uh, some of the 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 more detailed uh, parts of the the ship. But uh, we'll we'll call that good for this one. And so that brings us to the end of this project. Um, it's been a very rewarding project for me. I've learned a lot, um, not only about my family, but about uh, some things that happened during World War II. It's given me a deeper appreciation for um, the sacrifices that were made during uh, that great war uh, that, uh, well, uh, what can I say? Uh, it's just made me m much more appreciative. And at the very beginning of this series, I mentioned something that was said by one of the admirals who, who mentioned the little men in reference to some of these smaller uh, naval craft. Um, the truth is that uh, Uncle Jake was one of the little men too. Um, he stood about five foot four uh, and weighed in at a whopping 124 pounds. Uh, so, you know, he, he was not a big man. But in my mind, um, he's larger than life. Um, he's a giant uh, because he, um, he gave everything he had. For that I'm very thankful. So for those of you who have stuck with me through this whole project, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I hope it's, you know, been educational. I hope it's been encouraging, inspirational. Um, I know it has for me uh, on a lot of fronts. So uh, thank you all for for sticking with me through this this whole thing. And we. Uh, Look forward to doing more projects in the future. Uh, but for now, uh, you all take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye.